All right. We're back. Graveyard Shift Movie Podcast. Uh, I'm pretty sure this will be episode 95, I imagine, uh, once again. Uh, so first 18. off, episode 18, yeah. Um, first off, uh, so not only this week is it not the audition podcast that is recorded, but whenever I get my PC back, uh, will be edited and will be put up. Uh, but it's also not uh, see no evil, like I said it was gonna be, because uh, I don't know if you know this people, but that movie is just impossible to uh, to watch. Um, it's not available to rent anywhere. It doesn't stream anywhere. Uh, it's pretty. It wasn't even on the Google Play Store, which is crazy to me, Tyler. Because uh, Google Play Store usually has everything. Anything you could ever want. Google Play, like, it's always there. I remember that Antichrist movie. Uh, we couldn't find it. It was on Google Play, and that's how I watched it. Um, but this, the uh, See No Evil, was just uh, nowhere. You could, however, rent uh, See No Evil 2. Which I thought it'd be kind of funny if we did do the sequel and just not... <laughs> <laughs> just not do the first one but I was like you know what I'm not going to do it I have thought maybe we will revisit See No Evil I can buy a used Blu-ray for $27 uh, and I might buy the Blu-ray so we can do that uh, but today we had to make pick a new movie because we couldn't watch that one so uh, we I picked uh, Apollo 18 from 2011 which came out I want to say in the middle like the very middle of the uh, found footage craze like every horror movie was just a found footage movie um, but this one with a twist obviously that it's uh, it's in space and uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty cool as the <laughs> as the kids say um, I wanted to see this movie when it came out. I thought it was going to be pretty cool. Uh, never saw it. So this was the first time I ever watched it. And, uh, uh, I'm going to give it a four. Um, there's a part we'll get to, there's a part where I was really, I, I, they sucked me in and I got interested in the movie and then they did something that immediately killed my interest um, and then I thought they fucked up what could have been a pretty, not a pretty cool ending, but what could have been a definitely a better ending. I think they messed it up. So, uh, I'm going to give it a four. Um, yeah. Tyler, what are you going to give this one? I'll give this movie a 14 if I could, but I can't. You can't. I'll give it a six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had seen this before. Oh, had you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those movies that you watch, and it's pretty good to watch. You know, it's a, it, if you have, like, two hours to kill or whatever, it's a good one. It wasn't that long, what you're saying. It, yeah. If you want to throw on a movie. It, it's a good watch. It's just, uh, as you see the first time, you know, uh -huh. no point in watching it ever. Yeah. Again. That being said, about halfway through, I went, wait a minute. And then I went, oh, yeah, I've seen this. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. It's not very memorable. Well, the title is going to send you to a Tom Hanks movie. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like, too, because when I picked it or and threw it out there, you were like, ah, I don't really feel like watching like a space sci-fi horror movie right now. And I was like, ooh, I already rented it. <laughs> so <laughs> so we were, you were like, you motherfucker. Um, so. That's fine. I mean, you know what I wanted to watch, and I'm probably going to watch it today anyways. Yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 Even though, yeah, I'm yeah. sure we'll cover it. I'm sure. Um, but anyway, anyway all right. Uh, spoiler warning for Apollo 18. Uh, we're going to ruin everything about it, so if you've never seen it, you've been warned. Um, first off... Uh, I gotta say, watching this movie, all it did was kind of make me want to watch that Life movie that came out a couple years ago with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal 
and like Ryan Reynolds and the girl. I don't remember the girl. You know, you know the movie I'm talking about. No, but I have to ask you a question. Okay. Uh, this is totally off topic. All right. Not really, not really off topic, but it is off topic, hundred percent. I saw a clip of like a space movie uh-huh. where it was um, Star Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. I his name, Chris. Whatever. Yeah, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, and he was like talking to like a fake butler, like a robot butler. Yeah, you've never seen movie. that movie. No, what movie is that? Um, it's the movie with him and Jennifer Lawrence where they're on the ship that's traveling to a different planet and they wake up and they're the only people awake on the ship. I don't remember what the name of it was. And then I want to say Lawrence Fishburne is in it too. I want to say he plays like the captain of the ship or whatever. Yeah, you've seen this movie, huh? I know, I know how Lawrence Fishburne makes it movie. Fuck this ship. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what was the name of it? Yeah, but that movie... I'm going to look it up now that I know more about it. That movie's all right. As you know, I think I've told you, I'm not a big uh, Jennifer Lawrence fan. So anything that I watch that has her in it, I go in expecting not to watch it. Uh, but it was all right. So I, you, you you should check it out. Um, so you're not a fan, right? It's called Passengers. Passengers, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a fan of, of her. I haven't been a fan since I watched those Hunger Games movies. And uh, we had been forced to read the books in school and so then we watched the movies and like she the way she played Katniss Everdeen was not how Katniss Everdeen was in the books uh in every scene she looked like she was about to cry so I haven't liked her since then but uh anyway playbook one of my favorite movies never saw it she does have a movie that I want us to watch uh eventually that uh mother movie that Mm. she's in with I want to say the dude from No Country for Old Men is like her husband no the killer dude Javier something something. Baez, is that his name? No, that's a fucking baseball player on the Cubs. Um, <laughs> uh, Javier something. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did want to... I looked up See No Evil, and I saw it was like an hour, 25 minutes, and I was like, oh, man, that's fucking perfect, you know? Yeah. Um, and then when it was unavailable, I was like, well, shit. So I went and looked at some of the movies I have on the list of movies I want to pick. And the first one I thought about picking for a replacement was Abraham Vink- Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. Because I've never seen it, and I figured it'd be a fun one to do on the show. Uh, that movie is an hour and 50 minutes long, Tyler. I was like, no way am I picking this. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> like I'll pick it somewhere down the line, but I was in the mood now to watch like an hour, 25 minute movie. Uh, it's 30 minutes though. That's, that's like nothing. Yeah. But you know, there's a good chance that movie is just a sack of shit and it's really slow. You know, I heard it was really good. I've always heard it was very good as well, but we will watch it one day, but today was not the day like, I wanted now like that you said that I'm like, Oh man, I wish we would have watched it. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I really wish you would have picked that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I picked this solely based on the fact, well, not solely, but uh, it had to do a lot with the uh, the length because it was like an hour 25. Um, was it just me, Tyler? Or did this movie at all remind you of The Thing? Uh, maybe not. No, not The Thing. I mean... The thing, the whole premise is kind of like Among Us, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I labeled like, that podcast episode Among Us the movie, even. And this, you didn't really have that, right? And then when the guy got like, you know, it's in my suit. It's in my suit, yeah. You you kind of like, you're like, oh, what's going on? He's like, my, my thoughts are fragmenting. Uh-huh. Fragmenting and stuff. And I was yeah, like, okay. I'm now being drawn like, like, to the them. Thing, but there's never like a a big group and you gotta like pick out the you know the nasty yeah i yeah i don't know what it i don't know what it was maybe it had a lot to do with that one scene that we'll get to where they go and they find that russian shuttle and they're like digging them you know seeing it all messed up and it reminded me of when they go to uh like the russian antarctica site and they're like investigating there and so i don't know all i could think about though uh, cause we talked about how John Carpenter has talked about how he's 
interested in making a sequel i was like i was like man could he pull off like making there's like a moon base and the even though a lot of the uh the thing had to do with like not letting this alien spread to civilization and shit so that factor w- might be lost unless there was another way you could do it um but i was like man could he pull off like a moon base where the people are getting infected and shit like uh, i don't know it made me kind of want to see it i don't know how it'll work but you know um didn't already do that movie with that chick called like mars or something I don't know. Well, I mean, funny, that movie that I was talking with Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds in them is kind of like that. They're like, we can't let this alien, because they, like, have the specimen on the uh, ship, and then it gets, like, real violent shit, and they're like, we can't let it get to Earth. But, uh, but Maybe I, we should start talking about this movie and not... <laughs> well, you know, I'm just saying what it... Also, uh... I, I gotta say, at one part in the movie, I was like, man, would it be cool if this turned into fucking, like, moon zombies? <laughs> you know what I mean? When he came across the dead Russian dude, I was like, what if they're, like, moon zombies up here? And then I kind of wanted this whole movie to be moon zombies. Uh, which, I gotta say, I think at one point it kind of does turn into moon zombies. But, uh, you know, not, not fully like I... Like, I really wanted. But, yeah. They had, um... I'm pulling up my notes, but while I'm doing that, they had a, uh... A DLC in, like, Call of Duty Black Ops, where it was a... It was a zombie map, but it was on the moon and shit. It was cool. Shout out. (laughs) Shout out to the old, uh, Zombies DLCs, where they actually used to be fun and not shitty. Um... Anyway, the movie begins, Tyler, with a uh, with a text, a piece of text, if you will, uh, talking about you know uh, fucking 1969, Neil Armstrong walks on the moon, all this shit, um, and then it says that uh, the weird thing is, it says that in 1970, Apollo 18, 19, and 20 were canceled because of budget. Uh, constraints or whatever but then it talks about how then in 1972 Apollo 17 was the last official moon landing they made sure to emphasize that official part Uh, but it was like so what had they already like was Apollo 17 a go but then they had to cancel 18 and 19 of them as they were planning it yeah yeah people lost interest in it and they're like why are we wasting money on this well, I mean, it is kind of dumb, right? We're just going to a rock in in the space. <laughs> that sounded the most uh, uh, fucking caveman logic, the rock in space. <laughs> but, yeah, what was, like, besides going there the first time, just to say we went there, what was really the purpose of going to the uh, moon? Back then, there was always a thought of, like, colonizing it. Yeah. Yeah, but then they got there and they were like, oh, there's no way. <laughs> right? I mean, it's just a fucking... There's, like, nowadays, they actually have, like, found some places in space that they have say could possibly be used to, uh, you know, we could, we could bring life on this. But the moon is just a fucking rock. Oh, I sent that direct message. That's not what I meant. You did. <laughs> um... <laughs> um what was what was that one thing uh the the one with the the shuttle that blew up and they had the science teacher on it where were they going were they just going to space just in orbit yeah oh okay they might have been going to like uh i don't know if the space station was a thing then but yeah i don't think it was but they were just going up there to launch satellites and stuff yeah, all right. Because I remember being like, well, you know, if, if the last official moon landing was 72, you know, it, it was like, where was this other one going? Um, 
Fuck, I had something to say. God damn it. Uh, oh, it was all, also when we watched this movie, uh, watching all this old technology and shit, it's amazing how, like, nowadays space travel is so, like, I mean, we send celebrities to space. It's just nothing. There's nothing to it. It's like a plane ride up the space, and then you come back down. Um, uh, not to be that guy, uh-huh. but uh, they're not actually going to space. They're just going into low over, low orbit, which yeah, which isn't really the same because then you don't have to worry about reentry and everything else. So yeah, like, they're ba- like th- They're like going up to where like Felix Baumgartner was, where he jumped out of that fucking balloon. Uh, no, I think they're going a little higher than that. Okay. Because like I think they get to weightless atmosphere. Ah ah. Um, so I think they do get to float around and do the cool stuff. Yeah. They don't get to actually be in space. But. All right. But still, though, looking back, it's like, how did anyone agree <laughs> to go on these things? Like, it just looks like death, you know? Um. Anyway, so 1970, Man, what's I wanna, up? I want to talk about something that has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. So I'm going to go for it. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> So there's a a Chinese scientist who's a, she's American but her not her race is Chinese. But yeah, yeah. She's and uh, she had released a bunch of scientific documents and papers about uh, being able to re- reverse gravity, uh-huh. making your gravity less dense or whatever. And she took a three pound object and made it weigh a pound without removing mass. Blah blah blah. And then she disappeared off the face of the earth. And uh, they're saying that I don't know if you've seen the thing about the alien TikTok and all their Tic Tac and all that. No, I don't think so. I talk about it all the time. But anyways, there's a thing called a Tic Tac, and some guy in a fighter jet saw it and chased it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So they're saying what that is is her and some government. Uh huh. They don't say which that have like perfected the the technology. No. So where now? If that ends up happening, you'd be able to get in space in like fucking twenty eight seconds, yeah, like without a fuel and every you know. So it's just crazy how far space travel has has come. Yeah, like it's also crazy how like, I mean, up until I would say even like three years ago, like the government would never acknowledge anything like alien related at all. And I mean, in like the last three years, Tyler, how many, it seems like every other week they're like, oh, we found this UFO, you know, like, it's just crazy. What was the, the newest one? They just had one where there was like a, we have some battleship off the coast of somewhere and they just like saw like two ships up above them and it's like filmed and they took pictures and everything of it, you know, I don't know if you saw that, but not to date the podcast, but just yesterday, uh, some huge telescope in South India on a giant laser in oh, space. Oh, shit. Don't know where <laughs> yeah, that's not... When you no. find a laser, <laughs> it's yeah, like... I don't, I don't I don't, even... I didn't read the story yet. Uh-huh. But, you know, because I like to read it and really dissect it. Yeah. Like, okay, this is bullshit, but... Yeah, but it's just amazing how, like, uh, you know... what pre- We had a president, too. I want to say maybe it was Carter. Who, like, would go around and be like, yeah, there's aliens. <laughs> like, after he was done yeah. being president. Carter said it, and uh, Bill Clinton said that was the first thing he was going to ask. And they told him he didn't have clearance for it. Oh, shit. Well, then who did? God that's damn. The, that's when I realized that president doesn't mean dick, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and that, there's that one, too, that's really interesting that probably is nothing... But it's the one where they talk about how they picked up a radio transmission from, like, 3,000 light years away or some shit, you know? And they're like, we have no idea what's out there, and we never will. (laughs) They're like, we'll never be able to get there. So, yeah. Apparently, it wasn't India. It was South Africa. Oh, okay. And they uh, saw a laser. It's called it a Mega Maser. Ooh. And it's five billion light years from Earth. Fuck. And said it was created when galaxies collide or something. Oh. So. Or something. So, yeah. 
Yeah. But we know. We know. What we is. know what it really is. Yeah. I mean, um, I have zero technical yeah. training in this field, but I know. Yeah. I um, I used to always have a weird thought as a kid where I was like, why don't we send a spaceship to go as far as it can and it be like a really big spaceship so as they're doing it it like has enough to get them through like years where they can start families and so then like they could build a spaceship wait <laughs> they could build a space station start a whole new thing and then they could keep going further and further out you know what I mean you know what I'm trying to say like it's implausible and it couldn't happen but as a kid, I was like, why don't we just do that? The problem is getting, like, the building materials, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many problems with it. Yeah, there's... There's a lot, but... Yeah. Um, also, we still haven't gone through this, but... But have you... <laughs> do you think you've ever seen a UFO, Tyler? Uh, yes. Yeah. I do as well. One time, I was in Myrtle Beach... And uh, see, I wasn't that far when I saw mine. Yeah, like, and we were on our way back to the hotel, and uh, I remember it was just like it was just in the air forever, and then it just seemed to like take off. And I remember being like, "What was that?" And they were like, "Nothing. Shut up." <laughs> is this before or after you bought illegal drugs from some guy named Scooby? This is before. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is before. Well, it was Mario and Luigi, please. Oh, sorry. Not Scooby Dooby. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's the only time. It cooler if it was. Yeah, that's the only time I ever saw one. There was like a year ago, it seemed like something was just hovering over my house for like 10 minutes to the point that even I asked my dad, I was like, did you hear that shit? And he was like, yeah, it was a UFO. <laughs> he's like, he was like it was over us for so long we don't know what it was but it was it was loud as shit um yeah, anyway probably a helicopter considering you live right no next to it wasn't military base no no i mean helicopter you could it sounded like the back of a jet engine but it was above us forever it almost made me think you know we have those jets now that can hover it almost made me think say. we have the jet that's over, that was hovering over us for some reason Keep in mind um, that we live at a by a naval base. Yeah. And the only airplanes they use are Harriers, which are the jets that hover. Yeah. And you live in a neighborhood right next to them. Well, not the right next to them. Chances are, if they're doing like a holding pattern, then that's where they would do I it. I was yeah. like, I'm like 10, 15 minutes away from them, but you know. Anyway, what well, was your... Plane, that's what, 30 seconds? Ah, what was your... <laughs> What was your UFO experience, Tyler? Uh, I was uh, on the Outer Banks. My grandma like had a hotel there. Uh-huh. And on top of the hotel, there was these things called sun decks, and you'd go up there to get a suntan or whatever. Uh-huh. And me and my brother were sitting up there late at night and uh, just chilling, and there was just random light. Yeah. Came from the water towards the beach, and it just stood there. Mm. And then it, it took off. You notice how that happens, uh, right? My brother came was like, from hey, the water. Uh, my brother was like, uh, "Don't tell anybody about this. You're gonna think you're weird." I'm like, hey, you're <laughs> weird. He's like, yeah. yeah, he doesn't know my brother. I understand that, but yeah, he, yeah. He was like, "Yeah, yeah best not say nothing." Yeah. So, but that was that. That was. So, anyway, if any of you so have had to be something out there, right? Even if you haven't had yeah. a personal experience or you did, the way I say, I mean, like promises that probably wasn't nothing wow but like the way the hovering over your house not the yeah beach thing. the way i see it, i mean it literally the thing is so it's just called space that's how big it is it's ever expanding ever like i just can't fathom <laughs> that we're the only thing in it you know um i don't think people as a whole like can fathom how big space is yeah i mean just watch one of those like things where it just keeps zooming out from like you on earth and it keeps zooming out and like we're nothing we're we're not even a speck like it's crazy the best way to look at it and think about it is if you like i mean you can look it up or whatever but if you look through a high power like electron microscope and you go and do like a single drop of water 
and you zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and you see that there's like vast like things in there you know right yeah like, yeah so as small as like a microorganism is to us yeah we're that to space and like if not smaller you know yeah and i don't think that al- i don't necessarily think the aliens are like the big gray you know big eyed aliens or whatever obviously i don't think they're gonna look like us they're gonna look like however it is that they can live wherever they are you know um but yeah i I just can't imagine (laughs) that we're the only thing i don't think i don't think well not that i don't think but i don't know that we'll ever get any confirmation of that in our lifetime but, I think we will. Uh, we might. I mean, the government definitely is a lot more open about some of this shit. Uh, I don't know if I believe the whole, like, you know, Roswell and their, you know, the crash and, you know, we have aliens in Area 51. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The Area 51 thing seems like it's fun to think about what's inside Area 51, but realistically, it probably it probably is just like a fucking, <laughs> you know, where we're making our new air like specified or uh, classified uh, weaponry and aircrafts and you know all that shit. But I mean, there is that one dude though who said that they had the spaceship that had crashed and they could recreate it, right? Like they knew how to build it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, Bob Liddell or whatever his name was. Yeah. But then there's also people who are like, yeah, that dude's full of shit. So who <laughs> who knows? Um but you know, it's a uh, it's it, it's something. Aliens, man. Anyway, <laughs> after <laughs> after the 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 text that talks about in 1972 Apollo 17 was the last official moon landing, we get one final text that says in twenty in 2011, 84 hours of footage was uploaded to the internet, uh, and it has been cut down uh, for this movie. So they're insinuating that this hour and 25 minutes, they went through 84 hours of footage to get this. Which, uh, you know, that's something. Also, can I just say, as we'll learn going into this, they're on, like, this classified mission and shit. Why would they then film everything? That makes n- um, no sense to me. If they wanted no, no record... They were, they were told to. The OD told them to film it all. Yeah, but it's like, why... Maybe they wanted to film it because they wanted... The DOD wanted to see what was going on down there but the, i don't know and then how did they get the tapes like uh, uh, apparently they were sent like uh what you would call it they were like being uploaded the whole time is that uh, they don't have that technology back yeah there, so i don't know yeah i mean they're filming this shit on super 8 film like we said uh so uh, yeah i i don't know um the intro of this movie, I literally have it written down in my notes. Gonna be honest, this intro, they have way too much space jargon. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Um, <laughs> all I could g- gather was they're doing something uh, to keep an eye on the Russians. Because obviously during this time, uh, Russian and American uh, tensions are boiling over. We're getting near the Cold War. Um so you know uh we're we're just we're keeping our eyes on the russian it's in that it's still in that time frame of like you don't want to be a commie and shit too you know and uh so they're they're being sent up to space on a secret mission to uh i think it was basically like put satellites up there or something just to watch out for russian missiles and shit right that's basically what it seemed like they were doing that's what it sounded like um, they they interview these people and one dude is like oh man uh, I wish I could bring back a uh, a souvenir for my boy because he's, he's got a family he's like I wish I could bring back a moon rock for my kid maybe someday and I was like well you're dead immediately 
(laughs) when they have the guy talking about coming back to his family, you're like, all right, well, this guy's not going to make it. Um, uh, this is also they they're going to space and I wrote down in my notes I was like man shout out to the 70s where apparently you could fire off a whole ass space shuttle and no one ever would notice like that's just crazy to me I don't think I guess, I guess there are probably some places out there where you could hide a space shuttle right and fire it off secretly but then once it gets to orbit, we have so many satellites, like some country would pick up on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And now you can't do anything like that, right? Yeah, now it's like uh, ridiculous, but back then you could do whatever the fuck you want. Um, they fly up to the moon. Uh, they land down successfully. Uh, I wrote down that the one dude uh, talks about, he's talking to uh, the, the pilot and I think like Houston. And he's like, oh, man, you should get that man a cigar. And I was like, oh, shit, they brought it back. <laughs> Cape Fear, the cigars are back. Um, yeah. Also, uh, I don't know about you, but when they were doing the intro, I thought there was like five or six people going up to space. But it ends up being a two-man team on the ground. And then one guy, like, just... Uh, sir, yeah, he's just like yeah. circling the moon, um, and I don't think I realized that that was happening until like forty-five minutes into the movie. I was like, "Where are all the other people?" <laughs> I was like, "Did they just disappear?" Um, they get to they get on the moon. They immediately just start like fucking around and filming some shit. Um, and then when they finally get down to business with unloading whatever it is they're bringing up here, uh, something real spooky like runs by the camera, and it spooks them. And they were like, "What the fuck was that?" Uh, this is when I started wondering why they would film all this shit. But apparently, according to Tyler, they were they were told to film all this stuff. Um, yeah, so they knew they set up the system right. I don't know how they got the footage though. I uh, yeah, especially. Uh, because of the ending that we'll get to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, also, after this, there's a scene that uh, seems really weird now. Uh, where we get a shot where it looks like someone else is holding the camera and they're breathing really heavily. Um, so, at first, I think it's supposed to be like the alien. Now, thinking back to it, Tyler, I wonder if it was that Russian astronaut well it can't but well the because we don't know how long that guy was up there right or how long he was dead spoiler when we find him he's dead um so like maybe it was him when he was infected and he was filming those guys and that's what we got in this that shot uh but when they find him he looks really decayed but i think that might just happen when you take off your helmet in space like your face just gets all fucked up like that um so I'm not sure, but you get a scene of something watching them from afar, uh, breathing super heavily. Uh, oh, uh, then <laughs> we get a shot of the dude, uh, one of the dudes like walking around uh, on the moon, and it does this thing where it puts a little circle highlight on something in the corner, and it zooms in, uh, and it looks like a rock, but then it's like just a like a little bald ass little head peeking up from the ground is what it looks like yeah. and it was like it's weird because they like linked looked at it right they like yeah they showed you where to look yeah yeah that was the first time they did that and then throughout the movie they do it a couple times where they'll like highlight it which i guess makes sense since this is people who like went through this footage and shit um but yeah um they get back in the shuttle at night this is when we get like one scene of the the one guy who was talking about his family uh listening to like his cassette tape that the kid had gotten a hold of and recorded over it talking about how like uh you know i love you dad see see you later or whatever um and so that that'll i mentioned that just because it'll come back later for one part uh 
then we also get a random part where uh, the one astronaut, Nate, is telling uh, John, the other astronaut, the guy with the family, uh, this story about, like, how he, like, dropped jalapenos on his dick or something and his dick was burning. So then, like, his friend's wife is a nurse and so she gave him, like, a glass of milk and he had to dip his balls in milk. And I was like, all right. <laughs> he never, like, I don't know if I missed part of the story. He never explained how he got the jalapenos on his junk. Oh, but... he was chopping them. And then when he got done chopping them, he went in there and uh, that's what happened. Oh, did he Did he tinkle? And when he grabbed his pee-pee? Yeah, yeah. He went ah, there. that's a that's a real really thing. Good. I've heard about the people who do that when they're eating spicy wings. And they go to piss, and then they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> when they reach down. Um, it happens to me all the time. Not all the time, but yeah, I have done it before. But it's nothing like that. I'm never like, hey, I need, you know. Uh-huh. I don't ever eat spicy shit. Dick, you so, know? So. And if I did, I only eat, like, I, I always eat boneless wings. So I use a fork. Which, uh, yes, I know before anyone comments uh boneless wings are just nuggets but i don't give a fuck they're they're better so how you like that <laughs> um they get they get into the, like their little hammocks to go to sleep that night and the the john like bangs his head on the 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 roof and he's like god damn it i did it again i do it every time uh, and he meant, and I thought for sure that was going to come back later. Uh, and it never does. Like, they never mention him banging his head again. It's just this one little scene. Uh, but I was convinced that somehow it would have a, a role to play later. In the middle of the night, uh, their, their, their radio that they use to communicate with uh, Houston and uh freedom freedom is the uh the call sign of the guy who's circling around the the moon uh their radio starts to pick up uh what what obviously we know is like this weird alien growl gurgle type sound going on but they don't know that uh but they they they, they hear it and they wake up and they're like what the fuck is this you know um so they radio down to houston and they're like, hey, we got some interference on the radio. We don't know what the fuck it is. Uh, but Houston is basically just like, ah, go, don't worry about it. Go sleep. We'll, yeah, interference. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll take care of it. So they're like, all right. Um, when they go to sleep, uh, we get a shot of a camera they have set up outside zooming in on a rock. Uh, and they have this ticking noise going on. And as it's zooming in on the rock, the ticking gets louder, uh, faster and faster. It's like, and it gets to the rock, and then the rock just like goes like, just wiggles a little bit. And that was it. And it cuts away. And I was like, oh man, I'm fucking scared, dude. That's when I knew I had seen it before. I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Um, the next day when they wake up, they throw in the cheap-ass jump scare where uh, John wakes up and grabs his camera and starts filming Nate because he talks about Nate says he never snores, but now I got him on film. And as he's, like, pushing the camera down to the guy's face, the guy, like, wakes up and is like, ah, and jumps at him or whatever. And, uh, you know, I, I guess that was their uh, their little jump scare they had. Um Some at some point during the that day they lose contact with Houston, um, and they lost contact with Houston right as they find some footprints in the ground, which oh I guess it is yeah they they find these footprints, uh, and they aren't theirs, and so they're like what the fuck are these? So they're immediately they're like let's follow them, <laughs> so. They follow these footprints all the way back until they find a uh, a whole nother space shuttle uh, in like this crater there. Um, it's a it's a Russian shuttle. When they walk up, they're like, "What the fuck are the Russians doing here?" Um, the one of them is like, "How could the Russians be up here and we don't know about it?" 
And the other dude is like, well, we're up here right now and no one knows about it. And I was like, shit, you right. Uh, they they go inside of the shuttle. And this is why I say I was getting some very uh, The Thing vibes of them looking around this Russian shuttle for, uh, you know, the missing, the missing people. And they're like, man, this place is wrecked. Like, wires are cut. Uh, stuff is all smashed up and shit. But they go, this place is wrecked. And then uh, John hits one button, and everything works perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> like, he hits one button, he's like, oh, everything's on. And so that was just... I, yeah, I don't know what those wires were that the the dude cut, but apparently they weren't too important. Uh, also, while they're in here, they find some blood on the shuttle, a lot of blood even. And so they're like, well, someone got really fucking hurt in here. As they leave the shuttle, they find, like, this deeper crater. And, uh, one of them, I think it must have been John, the dude with the family, who is like, I'm gonna go down there. And Nate is like, no, no, don't, don't, don't go in there. He's like, I'm gonna, it's not that deep. Uh, they're worried about it getting too cold. Nate is like, our suits aren't made to get that cold. But he's like, oh, it's not that deep. I can get down there, you know? So he goes down in uh, this crater. Keep in mind, apparently we have such good technology that we can stream uh, all the footage instantly uh, to Houston so we can recover this footage. But apparently we don't have enough technology to give these guys just a regular flashlight up here. A working flashlight. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. Because instead of him just having a regular flashlight, he has basically... He, he it's the fucking it's like a flash bulb and it, it even said it's doing like the sound effect from texas chainsaw it's like the free and uh yeah and so it's classic horror movie shit where he's like doing the flash and you'll see like for a split second uh and then it'll get pitch dark again as he's going deeper and deeper he starts breathing heavier he starts talking about how cold it is He says that the ground feels different. It feels softer. Um, And he, the Nate up top is yelling at him. He's like, come on, get out of there. You know, stop messing around in there. He keeps flashing the bulb. uh, And then eventually he flashes it. And right in front of him, he's face to face with a, uh, a dead astronaut who, like I said, it looks like he's been dead a while. Uh, like he's basically just a skull now, but not like fully his face is just like sunken in and shit. Um, but he's like, Oh fuck. Uh, and so he goes to leave, but I guess he, he grabs the astronaut's body and drags him all the way up out of the crater with him when he leaves. Um, but they bring the astronaut up. They're looking for like wounds on him. And eventually they see he has a rip in his suit. And the guy sticks his hand in there to poke around. And he pulls out a rock. And he's like, oh man, this rock must have uh, fucking, you know. What is it? The rock must have been flying through space and hit him. You know, I think is what he says. He um, says that and he says when he drug him out that it got in there. Yeah, something like that. Um, also, can I just say, I don't know if it's because of where the moon is located or what the deal is, right? But all these craters are like impact craters. Why is the moon getting hit that much and we aren't? Like, uh, I know we get some shit. Oh, is it because of our atmosphere? Does it burn up? Yeah, that and the moon. The moon blocks The moon just takes the hit, yeah. yeah. So what happens if the moon just gets fucking... Is that game over for us? Craters on it and stuff. Yeah. Um. They uh they get back to the space shuttle. They radio Houston and they're like, "Hey, uh, the Russians got the space." Or no, they don't radio Houston, right? They radio Freedom, the guy circling around. Because they yeah yeah, they radio him and they're like, "Hey, the Russians got the space." Uh, you know, he, the, they're like, one of them's dead, all this shit. And then they ask him if he knew about it and he's like, what? And they're like, did you know? 
and he says that you know I only know what the 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 DOD briefed me on and all this shit. So he's like, he's like, you guys get some sleep. Uh, I'll get the DOD to call you guys tomorrow, and you can talk to him. Uh, so you're kind of left to wonder if this guy above them knows or if he's telling the truth. Uh, I believe John says that, uh, that guy is like a stand up dude. He doesn't lie about shit. Uh, but Nate is like, come on, everybody, you know, has like their own agenda for stuff. So he's like, we, we don't know what people know. We can't trust anyone but ourselves. Nighttime comes, they're sleeping. Uh, and then something outside fucks with the camera and knocks the camera over. Uh, and then it comes and hits the side of the ship and like shakes them up. So they're like, what the fuck? Uh, only one of them wakes up though. It doesn't wake up the other one, which I thought was weird. Uh, also for some reason that shot of the camera getting knocked over, uh, all it did was remind me of the destination truth episode of with the gnomes. And the camera getting knocked over. I think me and you have both talked about that episode where the camera gets knocked over. And we were like, oh, my God. <laughs> we, we were like, I can't believe it. Um, so that that's cool. Uh, you know, one of the reasons, Tyler, I could watch that Destination Truth show. I had this weird thing as a kid where I could watch shows about, like, monsters uh, or like a ghost if it was in like a different state but if it was in the state I lived in I felt like I was available to get attacked or whatever by them does that make sense I would I like wouldn't watch that episode because it would scare me too much I would be like they're gonna get me <laughs> so uh what's the what's the one we got is like the mothman I think we have around here or that's like the oh, big Mothman's one up north we have uh, Florida Bigfoot. Yeah. There's just be a Bigfoot in the Everglades or something like oh, that. Oh, shit. Um, any wooded place has Bigfoot stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're in the south, so we have uh, Chupacabras. Oh, fuck. That's supposed to be around because, you know, Mexico and all that. Uh-huh. And we're close to whatever. But uh, we're on the ocean. So yeah. Any type of deep sea beast slash alien uh-huh. slash Atlantean slash yeah. blue, like all right. Apparently, we have tons of mysteries. Apparently, around us we have Bigfoot, the Lizard Man. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember the yeah. Lizard Man. Uh, UFOs, which that doesn't seem to count. That's everywhere. Um, the Gray like Man. Kind of. I seem to remember the Gray Man. Uh, I mean, you want to talk about local legends? You know, we got a couple. We, we do. One one night. We did. Boo hag. <laughs> All right. I dated her. Yeah. Uh, Catawaba River Runner. That one sounds fucking. Catawaba. What? Yeah. Third Eye Man. What is this? Is it really a university? A university? If it doesn't have its own ghost story, the Third Eye Man dates back to 1949. When students claimed to have spotted him in the University of South Carolina's tunnels. The tunnels dubbed the catacombs are supposedly haunted by the university's own Phantom of the Opera. The third eye man is reportedly, you guessed it, a person with a third eye. The university has since... That's just a fucking guy that has a disformity. (laughs) Like, uh, Hound of Goshen? Thunderbird? That's a fucking car. And then the Chupacabra. I've seen the Thunderbird. Yeah. Yeah, the guy who works at Pepsi has it. He's like on the street. He's yeah. Like, you know, on the weekends and stuff. Yeah, you're like, oh my God. Every time you yeah, see Jesus it. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm switching to Coca-Cola. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, so. Uh, yeah, no, but you know, that was a fun little little excerpt. excerpt. Wait. Yeah, sure. The next morning they wake up, and guys, are you ready for the scariest part of this whole fucking movie? They wake up the next morning, and they look outside. The fucking alien stole the goddamn American flag. 
Yeah, that's legit. They look out. They're like, "Oh my god, the flag!" <laughs> like it's gone. Um. So they radio Houston, and they're like, "The Russians are up here. Our flag is gone." They're like, "Maybe it was the other uh, cosmonaut or whatever." But Houston is like. Houston's like what he would be on his own for like 12 hours he wouldn't have that type of oxygen um they do admit that they had received some intelligence they thought the Russians might be uh disguising satellite missions as uh or lunar missions as satellite uh missions so they had received intelligence that the Russians were probably going to space um their intelligence has also said that they believe it's only one cosmonaut that's up there. So they don't know who else would uh, be messing with the flag. Um, what was I going to say? crazy, yeah. They were like, there's got to be a Russian. There's got to be a Russian. Yeah. And the bullshit is they go out there in a minute. And the flag's like two feet from where it was on the ground tore up. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, they, they couldn't just see the flag from, from the side. Of <laughs> I don't know. It, it it was funny to imagine, like, the Russian extra cosmonaut being like, fuck your flag. Like, <laughs> like, so, like, astronauts go through all this training, and they're some of the smartest engineers ever because they have to be able to fix whatever breaks up there. Yeah, in space, because yeah. You, yeah, you, you can't send someone out and be like, I oh, don't worry, we got a guy coming. Yeah. Um, so. We're sending out Jim. Think, He's coming. Yeah. <laughs> they're uh they think that if there's a russian trapped on the moon uh-huh that of all things he would go and mess with their flag yeah like play a little prank sure he would knock on the door and be like oh well yeah yeah, yeah. Prison, whatever uh, i want to live on earth again you yeah know? but like this whole movie's there's there's one glaring point in this movie that i fucking hate uh-huh. and uh, the first part of it's right here uh huh. Because the DOD tells them, there's like, there's no way there's a Russian there. It would have taken them 12 hours to get there. Yeah. There's no way a person can carry that much air. Yeah. Later on, dude fucking walks back to the other Russian spaceship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one, no one says anything. Yeah. Um, fine. No, don't worry about that. This is the part in the movie, though, that I was very sucked in at this point. Like, I went from kind of like, eh, you know. And at this point, I was like, all right, you, you've piqued my interest. You know, let's see what's going on. And then my internet died. And I was like, well, that fucking sucks. So then I had to go out there and, like, restart my router. And that fixed it. So then I came back. But at this point, I was pretty sucked in. I was like, all right, let's see where this goes. They, they had piqued my interest at this point. Uh, because, you know, the American flag was missing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Uh, I will say, I do appreciate that as this is happening, they do what we want people to do in every single horror movie, where as this happens, they go, you know what? Let's fucking leave. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, let's, and like, at Houston's like, yeah, get out of there. So, they get ready for takeoff, uh, they get all their shit ready, they're doing the countdown, the 10, 9, 8, 7, all that shit. Uh, but then, of course, uh, something outside um, comes up and starts fucking with the ship. And uh, it, it uh, in the span of 10 seconds, I mean, it ruins everything. Like, it takes out the comms. Um, it, like, fucks up, uh, like, their boosters or something. They go outside in a second and see all the damage. But the whole ship is just fucked up. Um, so they have to stop their liftoff and they, they can't take off. Uh, they go outside and they're looking around at the damage. Uh, this is when, uh, I believe maybe Nate says that, uh, the footprints that they see aren't human, which that doesn't make sense to me because, um, it would make sense that those prints were human that they followed and it was the Russian, you know, and the Russian like yeah. was walking around. But now they're saying that they're not human. But from the aliens we see in this movie, 
we never see one that has like human footprints you know what i mean so yeah so i guess what they're trying to say is that at first they came because there's no wind on the moon yeah yeah so they're saying that the footprints out there were the alien so what i'm guessing this is i don't know if this is jumping ahead or not Uh uh-huh because you know we've already found the russian dead but i'm guessing the russian got a sample and infected them and then as he was going crazy he was out there just wandering around uh huh. Like you know how that guy goes, you know, yeah. a bit, goes crazy. Yeah. I think he's just out there trying to clear his mind. I actually think the Russian was the smartest guy in there because I think he jumped into the the crater uh-huh. and the cold would kill whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of where they hang. I so. I have a thought that maybe the prints were fabricated because we'll get into what these aliens are later. But I was like, maybe they just fucked with the ground to make prints to lead them to where they want them to go, you know? Um, I don't know if that's true. Like I said, like you can co- make your own theories about what what the footprints were, but yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm trying to look up right now, like, um, because their their prints were they had thread, they had lines on the end, right? They had tread on their boots. Correct. I'm trying to see if the, the other one was like head. smooth. Yeah, yeah, it was like a tennis shoe. Yeah, it was weird. Um, this is also I just uh, found because the, they have their rover up there and it's on its side and the dude just like lifts it up and puts it back on its wheels and I was laughing. I was like, he's strong, you know. But obviously, guys, there's no gravity in space, so you know, you can just. Yeah, things still have weight. Yeah. But, you know, I guess that one didn't have that much weight because he fucking had no problem with it. It's like they use that there, but when the guy's walking around and stuff, he's not bopping. He's not like... Yeah. You know, he's walking normal. Yeah. So it's like, wait, it seems like this is just a shitty movie and not space at all. Yeah. So, John, the guy with the family, goes back inside the shuttle, and he's waiting for Nate to come back in. And then Nate... Start saying, hey, there's something out here. And he's sort of walking around. He has his back turned to him. And then he goes, there's something moving. And then he goes, there's something moving in my suit. And then he's like, oh, my God, it's in my helmet. And you're like, oh, shit, what's going around, right? Or what's going on? So he's yelling. He's doing all this shit. And then finally he turns around to look at John and basically there's like a big spider crawling on his face a big cgi spider uh looking thing it's creepy i mean i hate spiders crawls on his face uh that's the moment where all my interest was killed tyler yeah. <laughs> as soon as i saw that spider thing i went oh <laughs> and it just killed everything for me um well see i i kind of agree but later on like uh, shortly after this, I think I I got I got reinvested. Yeah. So and I yeah I I might have too. I think there was a part where I remember being like uh, there was a part uh, I know for sure near the end where I legitimately found myself rooting for people. That I'll bring that up when we get there. Uh. So dude freaks out like falls over all this shit you assume he's dead but when john goes out there he is still actually alive uh and i thought that like his his uh face shield or whatever had been cracked or something so he wasn't getting enough oxygen but i think maybe his like uh something got disconnected on his suit so he wasn't getting enough oxygen so he was suffocating so john uh quickly has to get him inside of the shuttle and hook him up to air support so he can get enough oxygen to breathe. Uh, so eventually he does manage to do it, and he saves him. Uh, and then we cut to where he has his helmet off, and he's sitting there kind of relaxing after what just happened. Uh, this is when I finally realized that these were the only two guys, and the other guy was the guy that was circling around the moon. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I get it. Um, Freedom is circling around the moon, and he is able to get in co- into contact with Houston 
uh, but he has no contact with the two guys on the moon. Um, so, but he still has a direct line to them. So at least one of these people uh, can talk back to Earth. Back in the shuttle, uh, Nate starts to make up excuses about what happened to him. He's like, oh, I heard a noise. Uh, and then I must have got dizzy and slipped and fell and hit my head on a rock and shit, you know. So he's just kind of making up excuses. Uh, and then John is the one who is like, <clears throat> oh, God, excuse me. That's not what he said. Uh <laughs> John is the one who is like, you said that there was something in your suit, uh, something in your helmet and shit. And he's like, where did it go? You know? And then right as they say that, they notice that dude is bleeding on his chest. There's blood coming through his shirt. So they open up his shirt and he has like a gash right underneath like his, uh, his left, uh, fucking, uh, pectoral muscle. AKA the, the left booby. He has, he has a cat right under his left tit. Uh, and they're like... You know, some people would say ribs, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. Ah. Uh, and so they're like, oh shit, look at this. And then as John is pressing around the wound, he says, hey, it's hard around here. He goes, I think I might know where that thing went. I think it's inside of you. Uh, which I was very, you know, uh, usually movies like the, the, the play out. I did like these characters immediately assess that, hey, this thing is inside of you. We need to get it out. Like it was instant. They figured it out. And I was like, all right, well, that's cool. So John gets like these big sets, tweezers or whatever. Uh, he goes digging inside the wound and eventually pulls this thing out. Uh, the, the, basically when they get out, it looks like, like, a an obsidian rock. It's just like a black, uh, fucking rock looking thing that they get out and they lay it down on the ground. I, the only reason I think it's black and it's, I think it was the same rock from before, to be honest with you. Yeah. But the only reason it looked like that is because it's covered in blood. But okay. Um. My question is, how do you pull it out with tweezers? If it was a rock. I, I don't know. I don't know. But he did it. He, he did the damn thing. <laughs> um, so they get it out. It's just, like I said, it's just rock. Uh, right at that moment, they start to hear Houston come over the radio again, and they get excited, but then immediately just turns back into those alien noises again, and so they're like, oh, shit. Uh, they come up with the thing. They have What is it that they have to go outside to disable? They're like, we have to turn off something. So that we can con that we can talk to Houston. Do you remember what they were going out there to take or to turn off? The first time when he got attacked, or the second time after this. Uh, it was the the DoD machine, the UAPL or whatever. Okay. Uh, they decide they have to go out there to disable this shit. Uh, but as soon as they go out, I mean, it's almost instant. As soon as they go outside, uh, Nate starts to feel like shit again, and he starts to like wander off. But John catches him, and we get a, like, first-person view, which doesn't make any sense because this is a found footage movie. So I don't know how you would get this first person, like, through his eyes where his eyes are all shaky. And, you know, like, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but he kind of passes out, so John gets him back in the shuttle. And when they get his uh, clothes off, they see that whatever was inside of him has now entered his bloodstream. Like, uh, you can see, like, uh, his veins, uh, like, blackening underneath the skin and all that shit, and it's expanding. Uh, and his eyes are, like, getting bloodshot, uh, so he's infected with whatever this shit is. As this is happening, we get a thing where apparently Houston uh, is able to get through to them. They can hear Houston talking on the radio now, but Houston cannot hear what they are saying so they can't communicate with houston but houston can still see them and uh <clears throat> talk to them um they're like hey we're gonna get you guys home don't worry about it you know all this shit nate is immediately like they're fucking lying he's like yeah. he's watching us yeah he's like that russian guy must have had the same shit happen to him uh he got infected 
uh, you know, and he was left up here to die or whatever. He is like, I'm infected. Uh, I'm getting worse. You need to leave me here. Uh, you know, all this shit. Um, and the dude, John, is like the, the good guy. So he's like, no, no one's dying here. We're getting out of here. All this shit, you know. Um, that night, dude is looking real fucked up at this point. I do uh, uh, enjoy... How, like, every time we see uh, Nate from now on, he's, like, more and more sickening looking. This is what I talk about. It almost does turn into, like, a Moon Zombies movie. Like, he, he starts looking like he belongs in uh, fucking 28 Days Later and shit, you know? Yeah, that's probably, yeah, that's the best way to describe it. Yeah. Uh, his eyes are all bloodshot. The his His veins are still, like, black anymore and they're expanding more. Uh, this is when he's talking about, you know, I feel like I'm being drawn into them uh, and all this shit. He also has a line that I found this interesting where he, he has a line where he says, uh, fate has ordained the men who went to the moon to explore in peace, remain on the moon to rest in peace. Uh, apparently, this line was ripped from a drafted speech uh, by uh, President Richard Nixon uh, in the event that the Apollo 11 astronauts were to be stranded uh, on the moon, he was he had already prepared like a uh, a speech in case that happened, and that was one of the lines he used in there. So I just thought that was a cool uh, little fact. Um, also, I don't know what it says that they've already prepared speeches for like if these guys died you know it kind of seems very fake you, you gotta have like you know contingency plans yeah you know um there's a lot of that that in this movie that we'll get to later on well i'll, I'll get to it when we get to it um i'll get to it when we get to it that's that's right that should be the name of our podcast yeah yeah we'll there eventually <laughs> yeah um so uh the nate eventually passes out john then takes the camera and is talking to it himself he's just sort of talking about how fucked up the situation is as he's doing this blood drips on him and when he looks up we see that uh nate is now like bleeding from the back too and he's like what the fuck so he stands up and opens up nate's shirt more and we see the dude is like the the infection is really spreading his heartbeat is uh very fast all this shit yeah, he looks like death. Like, that yeah, infection is what you would th- like. If you said someone died from an infection and then you saw this, you'd be like, "Yep." Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so he's like, "Oh man, dude's really fucked up." Um, and then out of nowhere, Nate wakes up and grabs John's hand, and he's like, "I'm not gonna let you kill me." And John's like, "Hey, it's just me. It's just me. Calm down, you know." And uh, Nate is like... Who do you think is talking there? Do you think it's Nate or do you think it's the alien? That, I think, was Nate. Then next, he's like, don't touch me or whatever. I think that might have been... Wait, the the, the first one, I think, might have been the alien. Um, And then the second one, I think, was Nate. Like, kind of coming back to his own, but he's still like, don't touch me, you know? Uh, Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, it does seem like... You that. have this two people, right? It's, it's yeah. two different people talking, yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to tell who's who and why they're saying what. Because he's like, don't touch me because he doesn't want to get him infected. Yeah. But, like, another guy was like, you're going to kill us all or something. Yeah. And it's like, it's just you, though. So it's like, I don't know. The whole thing's kind of, yeah. you know, weird. Um. Then, I guess John manages to fall asleep for a couple hours. And when he does this, Nate wakes up and grabs the camera. And we get a shot of him just staring into the camera. Uh, and his eyes are, like, just super red at this point and bloodshot. Uh, and then he starts, like, shaking his head around. He's like, ah, uh, ah. Yeah, I don't know if that's supposed to be, like, time lapse or... He's just glitching yeah. the fuck out. Also, uh, was it just me, or I swear when he's filming himself, is it almost like you can hear, like, these demon-sounding alien voices as he's staring into the camera? There's a lot of, you know, I've watched with subtitles. Yeah, like, yeah. never growling or nothing. Uh-huh. So, like, there's a lot of weird noises that makes you think it's just radio static. And yeah. you can't really determine 
what is what, but it, it kind of ruins the movie. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. they needed to add, like, a definite radio static uh-huh. sound. And then when you heard something else, you could be like, oh, that wasn't static, you know? Yeah. So. Uh, so, yeah, dude's looking like death. And then he gets up, and there is next a legitimately creepy thing, which we've seen a couple times in movies. Uh, but he just starts standing over John and filming him. And he's just standing there for a good little bit. Uh, filming him while he sleeps then as it does that though we see a spider thing crawl over like one of the cameras that's all in the ship uh and so nate starts freaking out and he takes like a crowbar or a hammer or whatever it was and he's just breaking everything he's hitting the camera he's hitting everything john wakes up nate starts yelling you know they're everywhere they're all around us and shit He's fucking hitting everything. Uh, this is what I assume happened to that other ship. Was probably the the Russian guy. I imagine was doing the same thing. Um, but yeah, this whole ship's getting fucked up. John is like, "You're gonna kill us. Stop. You know, stop doing it." Uh, but by the time he manages to stop Nate, the ship is like wrecked, and so. Yeah. Uh, dude is like, fuck, we gotta get out. They're running out of oxygen at this point. Uh, he's like, we gotta get out of here. We gotta try to get to, like, the, the Russian shuttle, uh, is basically the plan. So, he radios Houston one last time, says, I don't know if you can hear me, but, you know, our oxygen levels are low. We're gonna try to get over to the Russian shuttle, all this shit. Um... Still, though, he's taking Nate with him. Nate is putting on his suit, too. Uh, he it, It's a cool shot of him, like, all infected underneath his suit uh, in, in the dome or whatever. It looks cool. Um, but they get outside. This is what I wrote down, Tyler. Uh, I hope you don't think less of me for this. But if you were inf- as infected as that guy was and you started destroying ships and talking all strange and all this shit... And we were walking in space, and I was behind you with a giant hammer. Uh, I'm dinging you in the in the dome. I hope you don't. <laughs> I hope you don't take offense to that. I would expect you to do the same thing. Um, but that's all I could think of, because the guy is walking behind Nate with the hammer, and I was like, man, you just need to take him out. I was like, he's a lost cause, you know. Uh, but he doesn't. He's he's a better man than I am, I guess. Uh, Apparently. Apparently, yeah. Uh, and then I do, like, it, it was. it's a funny visual of them getting in the rover, and it's just like, all right, we got to ride out. <laughs> yeah. like, so dude is just, like, zooming on the uh, rover, and they're not even driving for more than a minute before Nate starts flipping out again and talking about, you know, they're coming, they, they want me, all this shit. And so, I guess due to the weightlessness and space and everything, uh, very easily he's able to flip over the, uh, the fucking rover. And so the rover is just, like, destroyed. Um, when it flips, we get a shot of the, the face shield or whatever on the helmet hitting a rock and busting. Uh, the weird thing is, none of them, they never show that on anyone. Like... I don't think John, the main dude, has a broken face shield because he never acknowledges it. And maybe Nate does, but Nate's already so far gone, you know? Uh, so I don't I mean, know. You, you see him again and he doesn't have a busted yeah. face shield. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't know what that was. Because I was expecting that was where they were going to go was the dude wakes up and now he's losing oxygen because his face shield's fucked up. But, but apparently not. So dude's walking around. He's trying to find Nate. He eventually does find him, and Nate is at the edge of that big uh, fucking crater that they found the Russian guy in, and he's at the very edge of it. And I thought that he was gonna jump off and that kill himself into the crater, um, because he's telling the dude, he's like, "Don't come near me. You need to get out of here. All this shit." But before. If he was going to, before he could even jump in the crater, he's grabbed by something and pulled into the crater. 
Uh, John goes running down there to follow him, and he starts doing this flashbulb thing again. Uh, and eventually he gets to a point where he's walking over and he's doing the flashbulb thing and all the rocks on the ground start to shake and stand up and they're all little spider alien things. So if we you haven't figured it out by this point in the movie, um, basically all these moon rock things are the aliens. Like they're these little spider fucking weird creatures. My... My theory is that meteor hit and all the rocks that came off of it, those are aliens. Now, the moon doesn't didn't have aliens before, uh, but that something crashed there. And that's that what was what I was wondering because I was like, why would they wait until the 18th mission or whatever? Or wait, <laughs> the they have Apollo 17 and everything. That wasn't 17 missions, right? That was just the numbers no, they is. were given. Was it? No, no, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Apollo 11 was first to go into space, I think, and then Apollo 13 was the face, the first to land on the moon. Okay, all right. Uh, but yeah, it just seemed weird to me that like we would have been there so many times already, and now they decide to do something. Um, What's weird to me, I mean, and we're kind of skipping ahead, but all right. how the aliens even know? I don't like, know. They do I stuff, would like they wreck the cameras and stuff and the video recording yeah. equipment. And it's like, how do you know what this is? I would say I agree with what your theory was uh, about the aliens, like, got there recently or whatever because uh, of a meteor or whatever. But the ending of the movie, I think, deters from what you said. Like, it differs from what you said. It insinuates no, something else. I'm not saying that they just landed there now. I'm saying oh. that a thousand years ago it landed okay, there. Okay, okay. They just populated the moon. All right. Um, yeah, but they're these little, the, the aliens are these little spy, spider rocks, which I'm not sure how I feel about it. Uh, I guess, like I said, I said this about, uh, what movie did I say this about? Fuck. I, when we watched Exist, I talked about how I gave props to, uh, to, uh, Willow Creek for trying something different or whatever. I guess I will give them props for trying to think of a different type of alien and like the whole moon rock thing and they're, they're the aliens or whatever um, instead of just going like a generic route but at the same time maybe the generic route just would have been better I, I don't know I gotta make a good confession here alright you know how I shit on practical effects a lot? Yeah. I think they're way over, like, people just for some reason are all about them, and I don't understand why. Uh-huh. You know, it's like people who like, you know, albums rather than digital music. Uh-huh. It's like just for a sense of nostalgia or whatever. This film could have done with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of practical effects in it. Yeah. Everything looks so cheesy and stuff. I wasn't ever, like, yeah. Yeah. Also, PG-13. We don't. Uh, I don't think we watch PG thirteen horror movies often, so Shit. it's always. Uh, I'm not allowed to watch PG thirteen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, the the rock starts standing up. They're all they're all the aliens, or whatever. Dude is like, oh shit! So he runs away. This is when I said he. Yeah, this is when Tyler, like Tyler mentioned, he's back to the Russian ship already. And it wasn't like they were driving for hours or whatever. I mean, they literally just started driving uh, when they flipped over, at least from what we saw. And now dude's already back to the ship. Um, I guess I, you could say that, right? That uh, that's what it was. They were yeah. They had already been driving for a while, but I want to say those Land Rovers only go like three miles an hour. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, he the gets to the electric vehicles. I want to say. Yeah. He gets to the ship, and this is when I had an idea that, and it seems like we come to this a lot, but I was like, oh, man, he's going to take off, get back to Earth, uh, but then they're going to fucking shoot him down because they think he's a Russian. <laughs> but that's not what happens, but that was the, the thought I had when he was in the ship. Um, so he gets on the radio. He tries radioing the Russians, uh, and then eventually just anybody. He's trying to radio anybody, but we don't get anything. We do. We hear more alien noises. Uh, so dude is like giving up hope, and then finally, 
uh, some Russians come through on the comms. And he's like, oh, shit. And he's like, I'm, I'm uh, Lieutenant John, whatever, Apollo 18. Uh, you know, he's trying to talk to him. And eventually the Russians patch him through to the uh, Department of Defense. And he's like, oh, my God. He's like, you got to get me out of here. Uh, there's these things. Nate's dead, all this shit. And this is when uh, the DOD goes, uh, yeah, we know about your situation. Uh, and we've assessed everything. And we've come to the conclusion that we can't bring you back. <laughs> and he's like, what? And he's like, I got a family. And they go, we'll tell your family you died a hero. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, yeah, which that, to me, it was it was a lot of, like, the whole, uh, you know, b be a hero for your country and shit is just kind of bullshit, it seems like, because this is what they think about you. They just, you know, you're just another, they'll replace you in an instant if it benefits them uh yeah right yeah my job yeah it's yeah it's you know everything that's that's life um so dude is like yelling at them he's freaking out uh reasonably so i might add um i don't think it's reasonable i think it's completely understandable i see both sides obviously i see them trust me i see their side how they're like we can't allow you to come back but also dude is like i'm not infected He's like, I'm perfectly fine. Uh, which we get this a lot in, like, zombie movies. Once again, I yeah. mentioned the zombie movies. It's like, we can't take the risk even though you say you're not infected. Um, so I understand that. Uh, so I I think he's justified to be angry at them because they knew what was up here and they sent him up here anyway. Uh, and I think they are justified on their reasoning for not wanting him to come back. So he yells at them for a while. They're like, listen, we'll stay on the comms with you. You can talk to us, but uh, our decision's final on this. We can't risk you coming back. Uh, so dude is just sitting in the pod, and he just keeps replaying that recording that his kid had made over, like, his mixtape or whatever, listen to his family. And, uh, yeah, and it's like this little sad moment. And then all of a sudden... You hear in the background someone saying, you know, John, come in, John. And it's motherfucking Freedom who's up there circling around the moon. And he's like, hey, buddy, uh, you know, uh, the if you can get that, that shuttle up in the air, you know, I'm coming to get you. I'm taking you home and all this shit. And the dude is like, the DOD knew about all this stuff. There's stuff down here. Nate's dead. He's like, tell him all this stuff. And the dude's like, all right, well, just get up here. And we can rendezvous and we can get out of here. And this is when I say, I legitimately, and I love it when a movie can do this, because watching some of these horror movies, like we say, it's fun to root for whoever the horror villain is, you know, in a lot of these. Uh, in this movie, I legitimately was, I wanted this guy to live so bad. Like, I wanted him to get back to his family. Uh, even though I think I we... i you why, though. Okay. Because the villain had no fucking background, no character development, yeah. no story, no, no, I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, even like, you know, you think about like Predator, right? That's just because it's an alien. Like, I I think I find myself rooting for the Predator in the Predator movie, right? But, yeah. In an alien, weirdly enough, I think I found myself rooting for Sigourney Weaver, not the alien. Even though Predator and Alien, they're kind of the same not the same thing but you know what i mean but anyway yeah i was i was really rooting for this guy i wanted him to make it even though i think we both knew obviously you because you've seen this movie i don't know if you remembered how it ended uh but i think we all knew that he wasn't gonna make it but still you know i was like oh come on you know so dude starts to count down again he's about to take off and then all of a sudden there's a knock on the door and nate the infected astronaut is back and he's like let me in john and dude is like i can't let you in and he's like i'm not asking i'm coming in and he starts banging on the door and he's full like just zombie looking right now and he's banging on the door and john is like pleading with him he's like come on nate you're gonna you're gonna kill us 
you know you're you're too far gone i gotta leave you know all this shit uh and he's pleading with him and then I, there's like i think there's a moment of clarity where then we see all these like spiders running across uh nate's face and shit and I think there is a moment of clarity in this dude's infected consciousness where he is able to stop himself from breaking into the ship anymore uh, to pull away. But then the weird thing is, there's a thing where he looks to the left and there's a light that starts to shine on his pod. And then his, like, head basically explodes, I think. Like, I think the, the spider is, like, just fucking psh, his head. Um... But the way it's, it made it look like he just, like, got shot in the face. Like, someone was zooming. Like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Another Russian was there or something. Yeah, like, it's the meme always has been. <laughs> He's yeah. behind him. But it was very weird how they shot that. But, yeah, I think he had a moment of clarity and he was able to stop himself so the guy could get away. Uh, so the dude is able to launch the spaceship. Um, and he's like, all right, I'm on my way back up in freedom ship he is now getting contacted by the dod and they are like we forbid you from rescuing him he is an infected uh subject he's too high uh high uh what's the word high risk high risk there you go yeah high risk uh they're like you know uh and freedom's like well you knew what was down there and you sent him down there anyway and all this shit and so the DOD is like, if you do not abort mission in 60 seconds, you will not receive any support packages from us. You will not receive, you know, comms will be discommunicated. You will not make it back home and shit, right? Uh, and so he's like, oh, come on, man. And so this is what I mean, right? We were setting up for this ending where this guy who John had uh, stu stood up for earlier said he was a stand-up guy all this shit right is being forced with this decision of does he leave his friend uh because the dod says so and most likely you know he probably can't make it back home uh or does he save his friend and hopes that they can make it back home and then who knows what waits for them back there obviously if they go back to america it'll be some problems for them you know all this shit right and so it was like, all right, where? what's the decision going to be? What's he going to do, you know? Um, and then they took away any of that uh, suspense or like, all right, what's he going to do? Because then as soon as uh, John gets up in the orbit, uh, there's all these rocks in the shuttle that start to hover. And then they immediately just start to attack him and he gets infected. And so it was like you had this moment of this big decision and you know this uh moment of like human uh compassion or selfishness depending on how you want to see whatever the guy chose uh you know and then they just shit all over it because they just were like now he's infected so the guy didn't even have a ch I mean, he could hear him dying uh as this was happening um, and so it was like, well, there goes any decision he would have had. And then, uh, he doesn't even get a choice to decide because John doesn't have time to slow down the ship as he's getting infected. Uh, so he just crashes in the freedom in, in, in orbit and they both blow up. And that ending just seemed really fucking ruined, uh, for well, what... Tom. There what? was five different endings for this movie. Was there? Yep. Oh. And well, yeah. In the collected edition. <coughs> and I watched them. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, and they were all pretty much shit. Like, none of them were good. Yeah. So, there was one where... Um, I think I read about one where he suffocates in the pod or whatever. Yeah, and there was one where Alien puts his arm through that hole. Okay. And, like kills them with a pincher, so they're more crab than spider. Yeah, I'd heard there was supposed to be bigger aliens in here, like bigger rock ones, but yeah. Um, and the coolest one. Uh huh. That I'm sure they just didn't do because it was too weird. Yeah. Was that uh, he makes it home. Oh. And the DOD, the DOD had sent him up there just to get infected, so they could use the 
the blood poison or whatever uh, against the Russians. Oh. And uh, yeah, so then he uh, he makes it home, and then right when he gets out of the spaceship, they uh, they lock him up, and he never yeah. actually makes it home. So yeah. Uh. And the other one's really some stupid stuff, like yeah, you know, shit blows up, and blah blah blah. Uh huh. Yeah. What was it? What is it with found footage movies where they always seem to have like six different endings? Like Blair Witch has like three or four. I remember there's one where I think she goes down there and the guy's like floating. Uh, uh, like above the ground or some shit. I think there's one where the witch is actually in the ending, all that shit. And then uh, fucking Paranormal Activity has a bunch. It has the one where like she murders the guy with his, the own camera. You get a first person of it. Uh, there's the one where the cops come and they like shoot her at the end. Uh, there's one where she like kills herself. Like there's a bunch of endings. I don't remember which one is the theatrical one, but I remember the one I always liked the most was the uh, the cops showing up and killing her at the end. It just always seemed cool. But yeah, found footage movies always seem to have a ton of different endings. Maybe that's because they're so cheap to make. Even though this movie wasn't cheap to make, I'll get into that. But so maybe they can just play around with endings more, you know? They have time to yeah, be like... I think they... They don't know really how to end it, so they yeah. like five different and then show them to the focus groups and then... Yeah. Whichever one's based, but you know, we're all uh -huh. different, so um, but anyway, yeah, so yeah, that ending seemed like it could have been better, uh, but they went with the more generic, like, oh, now they're all dead. Um, as the movie ends, we see official records about the uh, <laughs> the uh, the pilots or whatever. Uh, Freedom, it says an official record, was killed in a training uh, exercise crash in Florida. Uh, Nate uh, apparently crashed into the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean, one of those. Uh, and then John was killed in a midair evacuation over the Chinese, uh, over the Chinese Sea. Uh, and all their bodies were never recovered. Everyone that said their body was never recovered. This is when... The movie ends with a text that says uh, Apollo missions over time brought back 840 pounds of moon rocks. Uh, then these moon rocks were often given to leaders of other countries as gifts in quotation marks. Uh, they are now either stolen or missing. Uh, and then we get one last picture of the group of astronauts before they board the ship. Uh, and that's the end of the movie. But then we do get a thing that pops up that's a website that is www.lunartruth.com, uh, um, which it it it's it's work. a yeah it's a dead site now. Um, apparently, if you went to it back in the day, it would just take you to the Apollo 18 um, movie website or whatever. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I did look up that that website immediately. But so this movie basically at the end. Uh, insinuates that America was giving moon rocks that were actually aliens to world leaders. What uh, was the name of the website again? www.lunartruth.com I'm on the Wayback Machine to see if it works. Oh shit. Let's I don't know see. how this works. I don't, I've never used that website. Uh... <laughs> it's not yeah i don't understand yeah. how this works i don't know but anyway also that ending right it's like would we not because basically that would kill the world leaders uh would would other countries not catch on like hey these rocks every time they give us one of these rocks our guy dies you know like that that ending seemed uh seemed weird also I, I i remember wondering i was like is that true have we have we been given rocks the world leaders like is this the actual thing but uh i believe so yeah so i don't know also i'm pretty sure i have heard a theory before like our actual conspiracy theory that moon rocks were aliens so i wonder if that's what this movie is based off hey, of hey i got it yeah so it's an ad that's censored Oh. 
so it makes it look like it's redacted. Like, yeah. You know. But yeah. It's, yeah. It's pretty dumb. Yeah. Um, this film was shot using old camera lenses from the 70s to give it its, uh, its look, though. Me and Tyler did think they just added it in post to kind of make it look like it was old. But no, that, that there was a lot of that. I don't care what. You yeah. Say. Like. Well, that's what I told. Read. Yeah, I was like, for footage from the seventies, this movie looks really good. <laughs> like, uh, it was very clear footage. So you know, uh, and then this I saw also, which I thought was interesting. Uh, Gary Griffin, who worked as a flight director for every manned Apollo mission. Uh, was a technical advisor on this movie. So, that was cool. He was there to, uh, you know, supervise. <laughs> uh, this movie had a budget of $5 million, Tyler. Made a box office of $26.2 million. Um, like I said, usually found footage movies are made very cheap. But you got to keep in mind, this came out at the time the found footage was like at its peak, and they were making ridiculous amounts of money. Um, so it's not uh, unrealistic that studios just started throwing buckets of cash to make these movies. Um, yeah, but so this is probably definitely the most expensive found footage movie we've watched, I think, right? Because, I mean, Blair Witch was, yeah. like, $20,000. Uh, Willow Creek was, like, nothing. Uh, yeah, that Dark Tapes movie was, like, nothing. Yeah. Maybe that VHS movie I did might have had a little bit, but it wasn't $5 million, I don't think. But, so. Um, I do like, once again, I do like that they took uh, an, an oversaturated market with the found footage movies and they did try to give it the spin of uh, putting it in space, which I, I enjoy. Um, the problem with that is there's no way someone's going to happen across that footage. Yeah, like we said, uh, the ending of this movie, unless this footage somehow was streamed immediately to Houston, I mean, the ships blow up. There's no way they would recover that footage. Well, you don't know that. It just goes dark. Well, yeah, but, you know, you assume... Um, and then that one camera, uh, was on its side inside the crater where the rock starts standing up. So it's like they have, yeah, there's so much, uh, footage and everything down there that it's like, how did they get all this to make this movie? Um, and then not only did they get it, but then someone got their hands on it and uploaded it to a website that, you know, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So, if you just kind of look past all that, <laughs> you know, um, let's do best of worst of Tyler for uh, Apollo eighteen. Um, my best of my best of might just be the effects on. Um, that guy, when he keeps every time you see him, his infection, the way it spreads, and how his eyes look and shit. I really liked it. He looked really cool up there. Um, yeah, and so I'll get, and I don't remember the last time I gave a best of purely based to like makeup and stuff. So I'll, I'll, I'll give the makeup boys one for this time. Give them the best of. Uh, worst bet, of. Oh, oh okay. Oh. <laughs> Was like the half second they showed slow down when the the helmet was getting cracked on the ground. Yeah, yeah. And it showed the the bugs coming uh -huh. to life or whatever. Yeah. And uh, that gave me the creepy willies. So. Yeah. All right. That was my best. Uh, my worst of, in case you couldn't tell by the uh, five minute rant I had on it, is the uh, the ending with him getting infected and shit. It took away any suspense uh, of what this guy might decide to do uh and just shit all over it and then it just made it uh completely uh useless when they just ram he just rams into him so it was just over uh so i did not like that ending at all so that's my worst of tyler what's your worst of for apollo 18 uh, 
I mean, the, I would say the ending is up there just because it doesn't tell you how they got the footage. I yeah. guess you're supposed to think that Apollo 19 went and got it, but... Yeah. It's... Who knows? But also, like, the weird thing, if they already knew what was up there, because according to the ending, they've been sending these moon rocks to people, then why did they send up a whole other mission to find what was up there? Uh, you know, like, what were they doing up there? What was the whole point? Like, they knew the Russians were there, but they weren't up there to stop the Russians. I don't know. Anyway, sorry. What was your worst of? <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Um, I didn't really like any of the actors. Um, I didn't mind them. I think they played their parts well, though. Yeah. Like, these, these astronauts are all, like, you know, Eagle Boy Scouts, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, well, I'm not leaving you behind and yeah. stuff like that. Like, I especially, sense. I did like uh, John's acting when he's, like, pleading for Nate to not destroy the ship and stuff. Uh, uh, but mostly at the end when he's outside of the, of the shuttle. Uh, but also at, at the first time where he's like, you're going to kill us. You're going to kill, you know, I, I enjoyed that. So, yeah, I didn't mind the acting. I also enjoyed the uh, the voice work for Houston. It just sounded like a very uh, Houston-y esque voice, if that makes sense. So I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed that. But uh, yeah, I mean, this movie, it's I don't know. I could have done without the the intro. They uh-huh. could have just shot it up in space, or they could have started off in space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I get it. It was just their way of saying, you know, DOD called and you know, yeah. off the book type thing. What, yeah, like I said, the intro was a lot of space stuff thrown at you at once that I did not pick up on. <laughs> I guess the sound. Like, not knowing if it's alien sound or... I don't know. Is there weird sounds on the moon? Uh, like, yeah. Thing? Isn't it supposed to be it's just quiet out there, right? Like... There's a part in the movie where they're asleep and the helmet rolls off and hits them. Yeah. And he never once questions that considering there's no wind on the moon. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just like, okay, at that point you should be like, listen, there's something in here with us. Uh-huh. You know, check your spacesuit out, put everything on, let's get out of here. Yeah, yeah. So, and I also, I didn't like the part where he's hitting the, the moon capsule with a hammer because they're literally made to survive re-entry yeah yeah and rocks into, fucking yeah yeah but uh i was like okay i mean maybe he's just really strong with a hammer uh-huh but, you know. yeah oh all right well uh i think that's about it for apollo 18 uh this is a much longer podcast than i had anticipated um to be fair we did talk about some mythical creatures and UFO encounters and so, but you know, uh, yeah. So next week, <laughs> next week, uh, maybe my computer will be back, so it might be audition. Uh, well, actually, because this is gonna be, yeah, so it might be audition next week. Uh, that's already recorded. If it's not, Tyler, what me and you will record coming up, I guess since we talked about it, uh, next week, why don't we do uh, Abraham Lincoln? Why do I keep saying (laughs) Lincoln? Abraham Lincoln, uh, Vampire Slayer. And uh, we'll... we'll, Again. Yeah. We'll watch that movie since, uh, since I guess, people like it. I've always heard good things about it. I've never seen it, so... I just remember that movie came out like the same time the Daniel Day Lewis Abraham Lincoln movie came out, and I remember thinking that Daniel Day Lewis was the vampire hunter one, but he was like the real drama uh, one, you know. So how cool yeah, would that it was be an though? Stone movie too, right? Yeah, how cool would that be if Daniel Day Lewis was the vampire hunter one? He did both. He's like, hey, I'm a character actor, so I, I could just knock both these. Yeah, guys. like he's already in the method, so just like between days he films like the vampire one that'd be cool so anyway all right well thanks for joining us i I still want to watch x but uh, we will we will we'll watch x maybe that'll be hopefully the price of rent will go down some 
maybe that'll be after Abe. Uh, we'll have that. We'll have uh, audition. Will be coming soon. There's a dog scratch on my door. And then, uh, like I said, maybe I'll buy that See No Evil Blu-ray and we can finally cover that one. <laughs> uh, but anyway, link to the gaming channel in the description. Uh, link to the wrestling channel that we were supposed to do an episode on, but then uh, ran into a bunch of computer stuff, so we didn't do one this week. Uh, but one will be coming eventually. Right, the computer stuff, but didn't run into the attic. Ah. Uh, yeah. Um some shorts should be coming out and uh yeah i think that's about it um got anything you'd like to add before we uh, get out of here maybe want to take a nap like this movie isn't one of those ones that's gonna make you yeah afraid to sleep yeah yeah it's nice and dark you know i'm just tired and it's raining so it's like yeah oh, perfect, perfect rain you know yeah all right well, uh, we'll see you guys next week for Abe Lincoln, Vampire Slayer. That should be fun. All right.